What's up, everybody? Nick O'Dwyer, back for this Anthony, here with another episode of this day in sports history. In yesterday's episode, we saw Vin Scully broadcast his final game in the major leagues. We don't have anything quite like that today, but we do have some more baseball to get into today. So if y'all enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This day in sports history. And we will start out today in 1884 at the British Open on the men's side in golf. Jack Simpson would win four strokes ahead of runners-up Douglas Rowland and Willie Fernie. Stay at the British Open one year later in 1885. Bob Martin would win his second championship one stroke ahead of runner-up Archie Simpson. Now we move up nearly 20 years later to 1904, and New York Giants pitcher Christy Mathewson would strike out 16 Cardinals in a Giants 3-1 victory, which would be a new MLB record, and the game would finish in 1 hour, 15 minutes. Five years later, we stay in Major League Baseball in 1909, and Detroit Tigers outfielder Ty Cobb would become the first player in baseball history to win the Triple Crown, leading in batting average, home runs, and RBIs, with a 377 average, 107 RBIs, and nine home runs. I know, nine. You wouldn't get that today. Stay in baseball in 1919, and Cuban pitcher Adolfo Luque would become the first Hispanic player to appear in a World Series, pitching one inning of relief when the Reds would defeat the Chicago White Sox 3 to nothing. One year later in 1920, in baseball, St. Louis Browns first baseman George Sithler would collect his 257th hit of the season to set the MLB record that would last until Ichiro Suzuki broke it. Now we move up all the way to 1945 in Major League Baseball. Detroit Tigers and the Chicago Cubs meet in the World Series for the fourth time, and the Cubs would end up winning Game 1 9 to nothing. Six years later in 1951, the shot heard round the world. Bobby Thompson hit a three-run home run off of Ralph Bronca of the Dodgers in the ninth inning to give the Giants a 5-4 home run, win the pennant. Now we move up to the 1956 World Series, which would see the Brooklyn Dodgers defeat the New York Yankees in Game 1 of the World Series, 4-3. Six years later in 1962, the Giants would defeat the Dodgers, 6-4 in a season-ending NL pennant decider where the Giants would have a one-game lead, 103-62, and to the Dodgers, 102-63. and Stay in baseball moved to 1972 and surpassing Honus Wagner, Roberto Clemente would appear in his 2,433rd game for the most ever in a Pirates uniform. Sadly, it would be the last regular season game Clemente would ever play in his career. But we bring the Spirits back up a little bit. Also in 1972, Philadelphia Phillies pitcher Steve Carlton would win his 27th game as the Phillies defeated the Cubs 11-1, and this win was almost half of the Phillies' win total at 59 wins. Two years later in 1974, 39-year-old Frank Robinson would become MLB's first African-American manager when he would sign as a player manager for the Cleveland Indians. Stay in 1974, move off baseball for just a little bit, and future Basketball Hall of Famer Jerry West would officially retire after 14 seasons with 25,192 career points. Now we move to 1976, and future Baseball Hall of Famer Hank Aaron would single in his last major league at bat, driving in his 2,297th career run as the Milwaukee Brewers lost 5-2 to the Tigers. Moved to 1981 in boxing, and Mike Weaver would outpoint countryman James Quick tails in 15 rounds to retain the WBA heavyweight title. Moved to 1990 in Major League Baseball, and Kansas City Royals third baseman George Brett would become the first MLB player in history to win a batting title in three different decades. And he would win this with a 329 average, so winning in 1976, 1980, and 1990. Nine years later, we stay in Major League Baseball, and St. Louis Cardinals first baseman Mark McGuire would hit his 65th home run of the season winning his second straight home run title over Sammy Sosa. We stay in Major League Baseball in 2001 with two separate events. In San Francisco, Barry Bonds would be watched for the 171st time of the season, breaking Babe Ruth's 1923 MLB single season record for walks. And at the same time that was happening, Ricky Henderson would score a run in the third inning of the Padres' 12-5 loss to the Dodgers, tying the record of 2,245 runs scored by Ty Cobb. Also in 2001, in the NHL, after a 21-season career, Paul Coffey would officially retire from the NHL, having four Stanley Cups, finishing second on the all-time points list 
by defenseman, 1,531 points, and playing in 14 All-Star games. We now go to 2004, and we start in Major League Baseball. Ichiro Suzuki would add two more singles in a 3-0 defeat to Texas to finish the season with a MLB record 262 hits. And that takes us to 2012 in Major League Baseball. We'll start with Miguel Cabrera. He would go 0-2 in a 1-0 Tigers win, but even with that 0-2, he would win MLB's first Triple Crown since Carl Ustremski in 1967, when he would hit 330, 44 home runs, 139 RBIs. Then, in Washington in 2012, Teddy Roosevelt finally defeated George, Abe, and Tom, winning the president's race for the first time since the race made its debut in 2006. This was Teddy's first victory in over 500 tries, and it is one that will always be remembered. Finally, in 2015 in Major League Baseball, Nationals' Matt Scherzer would throw his second no-hitter of the season as they would defeat the Mets 2 to nothing. Scherzer would become the fifth pitcher to throw two no-hitters in the same season, joining Nolan Ryan, Virgil Trucks, Allie Reynolds, and Johnny Vandermeer, who also accomplished the feat. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize, but I'll see everybody tomorrow for Nick Wire in the 10th inning.